What up gamers? I'm Jason. I'm Julie. And today on Dyson Dragons, you may have seen our unboxing with the shipping box way back in the day. It's been a long time since then. How long have we been working on this review, Julie? <laughs> since February, I think. Yeah, so almost a year. It is Folklore the Affliction, designed by Will Donovan and Nick Blaine. It is published by Greenbrier Games. With that being said, Julie's now going to tell you more about the game itself. It's a cooperative game that plays one to five players. Uh, the box is 60 to 90 minutes, but we can definitely speak from experience to say it can definitely take longer, especially based on the side quests that you're playing. And the rumors, though you tell me that that's from an expansion. Yes. We included it in our, our playthrough, um, but in any case, it can still be longer. Uh, and it's intended for ages 14 and above. I would say it's about two hours per chapter. So remember, it's per chapter. Each story is three chapters long, I meaning you get probably close to about six hours of gameplay per chapter. Now, what are you doing in folklore? Well, you're creating a character, a little bit like Dungeons and Dragons, not quite like Descent or Journeys in Middle Earth. You get to pick one and then you pick different paths. You also get to up-level your character, choose different skills and abilities. But unlike some of the other games, I would say, which are a little bit more streamlined, Folklore, depending on how you play, you're going to have a fair bit of variety as to what you can do, especially if you go past level cap. You're then going to start reading from the storybook. You will hit the road, traveling across the world map, getting into road events, off-road events, traveling to different cities, getting into encounters, taking out battle maps, essentially. I'm just going to call them battle maps, the location tiles, because pretty much you always do combat on them. Fighting with... Enemies, witches, werewolves, a lot of the big things that you, you would see. Vampires, there's yes. a lot of those. A lot of vampires, some al evil alchemists helping out a good alchemist as you try to save the land from the afflictions affecting it. And I think that is a fair description of the game. Yep. So we are doing something different this time. It is the holiday season. We are a lot busier than I would like to admit. <laughs> also, this is a beast of a game. How long did it take for us to just get set up, Julie, on that first day? I don't even know. It took a long time. Yeah. Because there is character creation, there's learning to set up your abilities, going across the world map, everything you can do in the world Remembering map. Remembering all your different rules and all the different <laughs> abilities and all the different things that can come into play. Yes, that became a problem for us because we had quite a long gap in plays, and we'll talk about that in the review. But in any case, there's a lot to the game. And because of that, we are going to be separating out the components and the how to play element. I will be producing, well, Julie will be potentially assisting, see how she's uh, feeling. She likes to assist sometimes on the how to plays, sometimes not. So there'll be a full how to play and component video that will come out over the course of the holidays to cover the game. We will be taking our first step at a gameplay overview. Gonna just do a nice review of the different sequences, talk a little bit about character creation, during across the world map, combat, give you an idea as to what you're gonna be doing in the game. We've played the full campaign. This is a full campaign review, so the review will be long enough as it is. As you can see, this is probably one of our longest intros ever. So what should we do now, Julie? I think it's time to grab our drinks. <laughs> grab our... Best friend. Best friend, companion, adventuring buddy. I guess best friend is the best. Grab my hair is what you did. We're going to take it to the table. We're going to take it to the table. Maybe I was cutting it to use in a dark ritual. That must be it. Now we're going to go through our gameplay overview of Folklore of the Affliction. For those of you looking for a more traditional how to play, once that is completed, trying to get done in the next few weeks, there'll be a card that pops up. It'll take you straight to that how to play. You can come back later to watch the review. What we're going to do is a overview as to how you're going to get started playing Folklore the Affliction and then what you're going to be doing in the game. First thing you need to do is select your characters. This is an example for a two player game. We've selected the Avenging Madman. We've got their character folio. We have their character card. We also have the Arcanist character folio and card. You get a little bit of background about the character. We have details here about their starting equipment, special abilities, their different keywords. Keywords relate to some of the equipment they can use. You also get examples here of their starting abilities, of what they look like. Here it has location extras, which are special things that you only can do 
at those lo those town locations as you're adventuring across the realm. Now, once you've selected your character, you need to choose a path. You cannot change these once they've been picked. So for the Avenging Madman, there's Avenger and Savage, Numerologist and Seeker. They do very different things. Here on your character sheet, you're gonna need to take your stats, transfer them to your character record sheet, as you may get some items and things that modify your stats. You can get positive and negative statuses. And then on the back here, you have everything that you need, and I'm just gonna flip it over to keep track of your heirlooms, items, what's in your backpack, your lore progression, any companions, consumable items, mystic arts. So take everything that's on there, transfer it to this, plus anything else that you need to do from your character focus. Now here we've got a campaign sheet. It as well is double-sided with everything that you need to keep track of, how well you're doing, what you encountered. You know, you don't have to keep track of everything, but it's just for fun. So this is just really your campaign log. Now once you've gone ahead, you've set up your character, what you need to do is move this stuff off to the side. You'll be using it as you play. We don't need it right now. We need to set up the map because we're gonna be venturing across the world. So we take out the world map. We are going to place our little pawn at the Church of the Crossroads, if I'm not mistaken. We need to grab, which I'm reaching to get right now, the story journal. You're going to open up the book and you start with story one, everything changes, starting at the Church of the Crossroads. And then you're gonna start reading the book. Now, when you have to make a skill check, to make a skill check, character rolls a d10, if they beat what it is. So you can also add bonuses from your characters. In this case, it's speech eight. You get to see what you're gonna do. Now you may have to skirmish with something. So in this case, it says the highwayman. Now to do a skirmish, we'll take a look. Probably won't grab the highwayman. As, as you can see, we've got tons and tons of enemies. Now. You're gonna basically, oh, we've got an affliction I'm pulling out right here. Oh. So for example, you got the wretched hag. When it comes to skirmishing, you roll the number for the number of characters, set your skirmish marker or a dice, which is what we'd like to do and what you get. And we'll do it properly. We said we're doing a two character game, roll a d4, set it at four. Now you can then follow this handy dandy reference card that we've got right here covers encounters as well as skirmishes. Oh, sorry, that is the encounter card. Skirmishing card is here. You'll need both of these. It's very good. So adventuring, skirmishing, keep these handy. You just follow the card, go through what you need to do. So these guys will try to attack you, then you attack them. Once you're defeated, you get the reward on the card. Now, that's just part of it and you're gonna really follow the storybook and continue on your adventure. You'll notice we're getting a nice tutorial because that's really what it is at the start of the game. Then it tells you you're on the world map and we need to go to a place called Ostalink. Now we need to travel across the map. Now to do that, there's a few different things we can do and just off to the side, well, off where? won't be a distraction. We have off-road and road events. Now, we can move our character stride. If I'm not mistaken, it's gonna be four or five. You can move down the road. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, miscounted that. One, two, three, four, five. If that was the case, we would then have a road event. You draw the card, depending on if it's night or day. We do have a nice handy token for the night or day. I'm gonna grab something quickly. I'm gonna showcase so we grab the day or night token, start with day. When you alternate turns, it'll switch to night. In this case, we move five down the road. We'd have the road event. So I'll just give you an example. The hound, we heard the low growl from behind us. It's a vicious looking dog, barred his teeth, angered that we were trespassing on his territory. Any one character must pass ecology six. So to do that once again, oh, we've got the die already, I was grabbing one. Gotta pass it, actually pass. In this case, we'd gain the Hound Companion card. Now, I'm not gonna take out the Companion card. This really is an overview. Now, if you can see, if we fail, we would have to skirmish with a Vicious Hound. 
as that's done, we can just put this at the bottom of the deck. Now let's say our other character decided that during the night they want to march us into town, we can then take advantage of any of the town services. Now it'll tell you the size of the different towns. We've got Wayland Point, Ostilink, and Yorotusk. Now Church of the Crossroads is the only place where you can up-level abilities. But we're in Wayland Point, we can use two services. We've got the list of all the different services that we can use while we're there, how much they cost. We can also use the services that are specific to our character. So for example, the madman, you might get a drunken disorderly at the end. The tinkerer, for 50 coin I can buy the arm guard bracers. So there's a lot of really cool things that we're able to do. So essentially we're going on our adventure. The storybook has told us where we needed to go. Uh, you saw a peek ahead. So at this point we're trying to get to Ostalink, we're at Wayland Point. We've got quite the ways to go. It's gonna be a far journey if we take the road. Now, the other thing we can do is take an off-road event. Now, this will switch back today. With regards to off-road events, it doesn't matter if they're day or night. Get a nice reference card, explains how they work, just to hide them. So I'm just gonna move this over here. So let's see what we got. We have the cairns. We approached several burial cairns atop a small hill. The stone mounds appeared to have toppled as we neared them. For a closer inspection, we heard ghostly moans of despair. We have a choice. We may repair the stone cairns. The spirits are in anguish over the damage done to their resting place. They will surely slow your progress on your quest. Or choice two, the moaning is obviously the howling wind. Better not to disturb an ancient burial mound. Move on, we have no time to race. Waste, sorry. Let's repair it. So, this boy's choice one. The mounds consist of heavy stone. I'm not gonna read it all. We need to pass. Archaeology five, so we'd roll, got nine, so we'd pass it. We follow the rules for success. It also says all characters will receive minus one to stride on the world map for the current chapter. No fun. And everyone gains eight lore, which is your experience points. So that is the overview as to what you're gonna be doing as you quest across the world map. Moving either off-road, one space to one space, or multiple spaces along the road. Now you may hear Julie and I talk about rumors in the review, we did add those in. They are from the Dark Tales expansion though, and they let you get some more longer side quests that you're able to do. And as you're questing and going through the story journal, you may run into what is known as an encounter, where you may also adventure. So reaching over, I'm gonna take out an encounter map. At this point, you would set up in the starting zone, your hero standees or minis like we have. We did get the miniatures. You follow the setup in the book for the different enemies. I just grabbed a few enemy types. Let's just take a look at an example of what a setup would look like. So on the farm tile, you can see there's a starting zone set up where you need to do to go. You might have a map skill check that you can do. So this place, the stick man, you can do a map skill check. There also may be a search icon where you can search for some loot. What you then do, you roll opposing D10s. So monsters, characters, the one with the highest goes first, so the monsters would act first. You'd refer to the monster card, not on the skirmish side, on the regular side, it'll tell you what their Vita is. You can use these nice cards for up to four different characters to set their Vita. So as you can see, it's 16 in a two player game. You then have instructions as to what they're gonna do, any special powers. What you then do is roll to see who you'd attack. So in this case, for example, I'm just using the Wretched Hag, not gonna worry about their health. We've got character one, character two, we'd roll a D4. Odds even, we get a four even, meaning the Hag is gonna move towards this character. Now, if it's a ranged character you're, and every character is in range, nothing blocking line of sight, you're always gonna roll to see who they hit. Once a character that does melee moves into melee range, you can tell that it's a melee character by the two swords here. They're always gonna attack that same character. Next, you have to roll the hit, you roll two dice, 
And you gotta exceed the character's defense value, which is 1D, so 94. Definitely would succeed. For the case of a monster, you would then roll on here. So in this case, you get a nine, which is Fetid Blight. So disturbing energy emanates from this hag, causing 1D6 damage, becomes sick in four. Now, we've got our nice reference sheet that I showed you. If you've got any questions as to how, what you're gonna do when you're adventuring and you know, potentially searching over there. Also, if you have any questions as to what's going on with your encounters, explains the move, how range foes work, targeting, attack, devastating strikes. You've got a little bit more detail as well. If characters are ghosts, so you have everything that you need really to resolve everything. And if you're wondering about stuff like Sicken, we've got the negative status effects. So you can see Sicken you would resist with Ecology, Sicken four, gotta roll a D10. And at this point you'd fail. So the Arcanist would be sickened and we must then follow what that is. Now in the case of the characters, it would be the same thing. We're gonna move on. Let's say it's the Arcanist turn. They're attacking the Hag. They roll 32. We can take a look at the defense 47. Now you would add your might. So you always do, you add your might to these rolls. Same thing with the enemies. They just didn't do it because I rolled a 94. The setting was dusk, so this would be plus two. In the case of the Arcanist, they have, I believe, and Take a quick look at the character sheet. Defense 37, might of three. So that would be 35, it would not be enough might, but you might have some might from gear. So we'll say, just for example, we'll pretend that they hit. They'd be attacking with their weapon, we'll say it's 1d4 plus one, you'd roll the dice. It's four, plus one damage, five damage. You would take your nice health tracker, and which was at 16, and just adjust it to nine. Now, if a character is defeated, you can place a search token in their location. You then roll a die, and then depending on what you get, so for the higher number, so 10, 9, 8, you find an item. 7 through 4, nothing happens. 1 through 3, you take 1d4 snare damage, and you'd roll a d4 to see how much damage that you take. And these are how you're going to be really going into combat. We'll take a quick peek ahead in the story journal. So as we're moving on, we're gonna go through just chapter one, because we get different encounters, things happen, we may be in darkness. When you get to this purple area here, where you can see you're gonna have an affliction encounter where you're fighting the big bad boss. Not everything will happen, well, to an affliction. So certain abilities will not affect afflictions. Keep that in mind. And then if you win or you lose, you will have completed the story and you can see here there's you might end up reading different story moments those are all sometimes choices and things that are in the back of the book that you're going to be doing so that's the overview with a, some rules giving you ideas of what you're going to be doing in the game now the arcanist just jumped in the combat if the heroes had started first you know you might be moving charging into combat things like that You've got a taste for Folklore the Affliction. Now, Julie and I are going to come at you with our full campaign review of this game. And we went through all of this Story Journal 1. Hope you enjoyed the quick overview. This is just designed to entice you. And don't worry, the full how to play, which will include character creation, setup, what you're doing on the world map, full combat rules, will be coming in a week or two. It's a busy time of year. The holidays happy that we finally got to finish up this campaign and we're excited to see what's next from folklore now keep it right here we'll be back in a flash so folklore the affliction the full campaign we went through all of story journal one what did you think of this game well it's a beast of a game i'm going to say that <laughs> there's a lot to it there's a lot of components um I think Jason's got it down to a science now on taking it out and putting it away. But basically, putting it away is worse than taking it out. Sorry for jumping in. It's it's definitely put it, cleaning up. So we we played this um, several basically full days at a time with uh, uh, so two other friends and played it every couple of weeks, every month, whenever we could do it over the course of 
almost a year. Ten months, basically. Uh, and at one point, um, at one point, we realized that each chapter was taking us several hours. So we definitely got a lot of gameplay out of this. I, I would say we probably well, we got over 20 hours of gameplay for sure. Oh, well over 20 hours. Each chapter took us about six hours. And there was a few that took us longer. I will admit to this right now, we made a big mistake. We played the game on what I like to call hard mode. We completely forgot about our damage bonus for about two chapters, I think chapter two and three. Somehow we did not die. I'm incredibly impressed by that. Quite a few times we were down to like four or five hit points on a few characters, but those took a lot longer than they should. Probably closer to 10 hours instead of six because combat was a slog. It was challenging, yeah. it was still fun. We, we had a good time with it, don't get me wrong, but it was just kind of funny afterwards when we double checked the rules and we looked at our damage bonus, we'd all, we'd all blanked. We're like, oh, this makes such a huge difference. Yeah, I, I mean, I would say this definitely has a lot of different things that you have to remember about your character. Um, we don't tend to destroy games, so we don't tend to mark things in pen. I think if we were using the tools and not caring if we were marking them or taking photocopies of them and, and using on that so some of their player cards or whatever, it might have been a little bit easier, but you know, even I, I disagree. I mean, I've played a lot of RPGs, whether it's pen or pencil. Were, you were forgetting stuff as well. It's well, the one thing I will say, and this is definitely a critique, and I'll agree with you. I think the player cards are too small. I think having them the reverse sides, the way that it worked, there's definitely a streamlined version, and there could be a better character sheet than what we have. And coming from someone that plays things like D&D, Starfinder, Savage Worlds, we all know the best character sheets usually aren't the one included in the game. So I should have thought about that in this game. Yeah. So, I mean, for me, it, what, part of the frustrating things is, you know, even if we were only went a week or two between playing uh, and, you know, when we reminded ourselves, okay, let's go through all of our things. There's so many different aspects and elements you know there's you know there's bonuses on against a cult there's bonuses in this case there's a bonus in that case there's a bonus that, and and they were easy to forget you know and we 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 won the last game pretty the last chapter pretty handily but afterwards i'm looking and saying i completely forgot to use like these three different abilities but that's because they're on the back of your character sheet yeah like i said i think the character sheet made a big difference i i do think that we are going to continue with folklore. We've got story journals two and three and the expansion coming, which is supposed to have some improved combat. We'll see. I've been hearing different things on the Kickstarter. Looking forward to getting it because we've talked a little bit about the things that we don't like. I'll talk about my negatives and then I think we should move into our positive about the game and we'll talk about the whole campaign experience. And I think I'll put a flashing spoiler tag or a spoiler tag. I'll see if I can make it flash. I don't know if I want to figure that out. <laughs> it shouldn't be that difficult with Premiere, but never done it before. There are so the other thing I would say for me is that uh, if it was just for the standees, I wouldn't be as impressed with the game. I, I did enjoy having the miniatures, and and you like minis. Sorry I, to jump in, but I do she like likes miniatures. Games I don't think that she would like. They have minis, she likes them. They have standees, she's less So impressed. just to finish on the playmat, <laughs> just sorry, not the playmat, but the player, the way we have these little playmats that you have, which I believe are probably uh, a Kickstarter exclusive. Uh, no, yeah, I believe you can purchase them from Greenbrier Games website, but they are an add-on. They do not come with the game itself. So even with those playmats, I found that by the, you know, halfway through the game, there wasn't really room to, and I kept trying to figure out a way to keep all the stuff so that I could see it. So, you know, when you compare it to something like, um, you know, like Zombicide, where you have all your cards neatly put and you can see everything in your in your backpack, I, I think that that was, that's not as well organized. You can work around it. It just, you know, it was a little frustrating to have my cards moving around everywhere and trying to figure th stuff out. And I will definitely agree. I think that the, the mats we have do a great job for your character in terms of like arms, head, like your gear yeah. looks great. But definitely for your rituals, abilities and things like that, it does get a little crowded. Especially when you use rumors and you have some avid video gamers and RPG gamers who love to see what's on the other side of the hill. And you essentially maybe end up almost too powerful 
then you should be. So, so that definitely is something that I would say is a little bit of a drawback. If you do incorporate rumors and things like that, you can sort of outpace the difficulties to what is in the, this box. But we still had a good time with it. Negatives, uh, we talked a lot about just like sort of the, the character sheets. Uh, I also didn't love the combat. I'd have to say that while combat is fun, the opposing die rolls, which is clearly inspired by making a d20 roll with Dungeons and Dragons, is very sort of dull. It's just rolling a dice, do I hit, roll damage. And uh, coming from other games like Descent, we even got to play some uh, Cine Tempore uh, recently. Uh, as far as I'd like. Games like Zombicide. Well, Zombicide is fairly similar, actually, actually to, to this. But just, I would say combat isn't as exciting as I would like. I didn't feel like there was as many, like, epic abilities or super combos that you often like to see, especially as our character got more powerful. It does go with the theme, though, but I would maybe, I'd like something that just jazzes up, spices up the combat a little bit compared to what we have in the box. I was going to agree. I mean, um, the other thing I found is um, I, at some point I wasn't sure I, like, I think it took me till getting at least halfway through the, this, the, the game before I really started appreciating my character because, you know, unlike other games where we play where your characters power up, I just found that, you know, it just wasn't as much, fun and i think it boils down to what you're saying with the combat there was less that you could do uh and i found that even other games do it do it maybe a little better one of the things i think this does very well is a part of, and i'm sure you're gonna have a lot more to add than i do i think the storytelling in this is pretty pretty good no and i think uh, is there any other negatives that you want to get about the game i think not that i can think of right now i think just to give a summary because we're going to be going into depth. We spent a ton of time with this game. We can say the things that we'd like to see a little bit better are the character sheets. Character creation's fine. I didn't have any difficulties with that at all. Character sheets could use a little bit of improvement. Would love to see some nice add-ons for organization of your character. That'd be something that would be great. We've got some good stuff, but would like to see something better. And definitely combat, I would say, are the biggest drawbacks to the game. Mm -hmm. Now, storytelling wise, and if you're wondering why we spent so much time with this game, it is definitely the story, and the story sucked us right in. I was going to say the story sucked. I was like, what? No, no, it just drew us in. I there mean, you go. Better word. Better word. I was just was thinking about, you know, opening a book and getting sucked inside because with that sort of fairy tale you feel. Pulled into the story. Okay, pulled in. That's why we played full day game sessions because we were just plowing through the story. We wanted to get to the end of the chapter. We wanted to see what was on the next horizon. We even got distracted by some very cool side quests and rumors that those are part of Dark Tales that kept us coming back for more and more. And it was a lot of fun. So, As I said, he really enjoys that side of it. And I can say uh, there are times I just don't care. In this, in this case, you know, it... it there was some a lot of fun things about it. I particularly enjoyed being the one that would read, you know, the the uh, the road or off road events, and you know that was my component of adding to the storytelling. So I thought I thought that was fun, and and I to on a comp different note, I'm going to bring it. I really enjoyed creating my character in this. There's sometimes it's you know this there's definite decisions that you make here it's not just a question of what you pull what cards you get there is you know you make a call and a decision as you're going along the game of which way you want to go and sometimes you look back and you went should have gone the other way but that's part of creating you know and making choices about what your character is going to be and how they're going to what they're going to learn no and i i did love that i mean the story creating your character I mean, I call my guy Logan because I felt like the Avenging Madman looks like Wolverine. He's got a claw, I'm like, so I'm just going to play Wolverine. It feels very thematic. It's easy to play, like, in the spirit of your character. And uh, he got very powerful at the end once. I was able to do a lot with uh, dual wielding, which was very cool. And I would say that what I found sort of disappointing, and I think it's because we were playing the game in hard mode, we actually didn't die. You think it's because we played it in hard mode? I think so, because once we figured out what we were doing wrong with the damage bonus, combat felt a lot easier than it had at well, the Well, I know one of the one of the guys we were playing with really wanted to become a ghost, and it just, it 
by the time we realized that we weren't going to become ghosts, it was, you know, we would have had to basically decide to commit suicide uh, <laughs> on purpose uh, because it wasn't going to be happening in, in combat, at least not being smart. No, and when you're getting the right boons, boons are a very cool mechanic, and being able to do dual wield, and we're at the end of the game where some of the stuff should be a lot stronger, but we've gone on so many side quests, looked under every single nook and cranny, got all the gear possible, upgraded everything, just came to the point where, like, my Avenging Madman was able to do, you know, like, 40 damage Look, on the Look, I, I didn't have the best weapons. I, and even you almost... still did tons of damage. But the, that's, I was going to say, I ne didn't necessarily have the best weapons. I spent a long time with a pretty pathetic weapon, actually. That being said... Uh, you know, my character had arcane mastery and was, you know, occult mastery and got, you know, I, I got to use some pretty powerful spells and that, uh, not spells, rituals. And that was pretty cool. You know, allowed me to do, you know, summon Cthulhu and, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, it, create open portals that, you know, had tentacles coming out of them and destroyed, you know, different monsters. So, you know, that, that was a fun element of it because as you said, we built into our characters and really could bring them to life and we could make decisions based on our characters. So there are times that I would have made a different decision based on what Julie would have decided, but I was basing on my character and like, this is what she would do. I think that's stupid, but this is what the character would do. No, not really like the story, the cards, the theme really draws you into the world where you want to interact with the world as a character into the that exists like a real person that maybe has gone through some of the stuff uh we talked a little bit about character creation but you do get a nice background for your character just setting the stage and then you can sort of fill it in on your own i mean we i kept making jokes i was like these guys are the ones that killed my family so i'm gonna go avenge them or the fact that my character would get into bar fights every so often if i slept at the end because i'm a madman and then everyone has like their own like sort of special ability. Like I couldn't become deranged because I'm already insane. Like there's just some really neat aspects to the game with a very engaging story. Now we've got to play through six chapters. The nice thing I think about it going back to the story is everything is interconnected. Like story one feeds into two, feeds into three and so on and so forth. There's definitely a thread that you're following throughout all of it. And going through it, interacting with different characters. Some actually make multiple appearances, which is cool, not a lot of them. It's just really, really fun. And it wasn't until we played a lot of the game and probably spent a little too much time on rumors that I think we all kind of got sick of the game when we got to chapter six. And that's because we've been at it for 10 months. It's time for us to play something new, but we did finish the game. We had a great time with it. And I know that Everyone that we played with wants to come back to Folklore of the Affliction. They want to play Dark Tales. We're probably going to play something else. I think the talk right now is finally getting Gloomhaven to the table since I got an organizer. Yay. <laughs> so it shouldn't be so bad. But one of our friend's comments, uh, this is a comment by Mike Essie, who was, it started Gloomhaven. He was impressed by Folklore because of the story. So we played through the game because it drew us in and he was enjoying it more than Gloomhaven, which is a lot of fun from what he said. He's only played like one or two missions, so he's restarting with us. But it's more tactical, it's less engaging, it doesn't have that, you know, that world building element. And for that aspect, I think folklore really shines. Yep, agreed. So is there anything else you'd like to add to our full campaign of Folklore of the Affliction? I think we both should say one thing. Are we happy we played it, that we spent this much time with the game? Yeah, I definitely, I mean, I enjoyed playing it. I... I wouldn't have agreed to keep playing it if I wasn't. I mean, I, I that was a lot of investment, time investment. <laughs> um, I agree that I think at this point it's time to take a little break and move on to, to I mean, we intersperse this with a lot of different games, obviously, because we bring, bring new, new content. Um, but it's it's good to finally bring you this review and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll start it up again, you know, in several months after we finish another campaign. But it made me uh, also want to, you know, jump back into to descent, you know, and, and, and play that a little bit because, you know, it's similar but different. And, you know, maybe it's time to pull out descent again. Well, there's like, we never finished the Nericol campaign because neither of us really loved our characters. And, well, there's that also, there's that new one as well. So we'll definitely be checking that out. But I'm happy to have played Folklore. 
It belongs in the collection. It's one that I'm sure that I'm going to revisit this box. Maybe not now, but in a few years. But we definitely got our money's worth. This is a game that for anyone that loves like Dungeons and Dragon storytelling, you like JRPGs, one things that just. Well, I was going to say based on what, he just, it, what he world. just said, um, this is not. You know, and I've used this term before, and if anybody actually listens up to like if it means anything to anybody then i will use it again and if it doesn't well maybe i'll stop using it someday but this is not a gamer light game i would say this is you you have to be uh you know this is not something where you bring out for people who casually play games i would say um you know i i actually i think that this is something i you know i'm thinking of my cousin marie claude and her three boys i think this is something that they would love they're maybe a little younger than 14 um but this is the kind of thing they like to play games they like to play i think they've come to that point i wouldn't pull this out for you know my parents no this is, this is not a family game straight this, up this it, is you know and we have other friends with whom we can play we've we've played other lighter games this is not for your casual gamer if you have two three games in your collection and casually game or you're thinking of giving it to somebody who plays every once in a while this is probably not the game for them no this is for someone that plays Dungeons and Dragons someone that plays Final Fantasy uh, one of the things that I or, didn't mention hang on hang on because I want to get this out before I forget we didn't talk about the world map we've got the expanded world map but this is the first game that I've played I mean we've traveled around in Descent traveled around in Imperial Assault traveled around in Lord of the Rings nothing has the same like random encounter like moving across the map boop something happens that you got from video games folklore does that and it's amazing and it's one of my favorite aspects of this game yeah based on what you said i would be afraid listening to this and say okay this game is not for me uh if you've watched some of our videos and you think you know somebody like me or you are like me i've never played dungeon and dragons i still to this day i know jason still wants me to play I'm not interested in playing Dungeons and Dragons, but this is a fun, uh, a fun game. You know, if you enjoy the storytelling, you like character building, you like combat, you like rolling dice, and you're not afraid of the complex, a little bit of added complexity of all the different mechanics and things that ar go around knowing your character, but also knowing the game. Because it's definitely not the easiest game we've ever played. No, oh, but it's not the hardest either. The, There's the just real... a lot of elements to it. I disagree, actually. The game is simple there's the problem is there's a lot of little things to remember so the core is this and you're not going to have any difficulty remembering the core the problem is different as you take time away or play other games like we do remembering what something like cold steel or execute or vorpal and like keywords it's difficult to remember not everyone has a reference sheet that's something that we probably need to look at the game definitely is lacking enough player aids and a well-structured character sheet to make interacting with it easier. I think that a better tool would make it a lot more fun. Like, let's give you an example is Cthulhu Death May Die, which we just reviewed. That little guide like that we have on like, every character sheet goes a long way towards making it accessible yeah, and easier Yeah, but each of your characters is not as complicated as, as... No, there's more choices and things like that, and I agree And it builds, them. and it gets more and more complicated. That being said, I think we've harped on that enough. We talked about it. Mm -hmm. uh, we were... I'm just... I think we're debating the level of complexity of the game. I just was trying to say it's not just for... You know, let's, let's not just pigeonhole it for people who like D&D. &D. No, no, but I'm saying... If you like... But that's why I was talking about video games. If you like role-playing games whatever shape or form that take place. And as much as she pretends not to like role-playing games, Yo, I know she likes role-playing games. Careful where you thread here. <laughs> I know she likes role-playing games. Or if she at least liked playing video games, her favorite type would be role-playing games. In any case, if you like those kind of games, this is the game for you. You will enjoy it. You will have a blast with it. And it's definitely something that is probably never going to leave our collection because there's just so many hours of content and I can see myself, you know, two years from now being like, let's go through Story Journal 1. Well, I'll be the witch doctor. Well, not the witch doctor. Okay. The witch hunter this On time. that note, I think it's time. I think we've made this review long enough. It's time to tell them, remind people. Oh, we, have to, we haven't rated. Yeah, I was so jumping you're, ahead. You're jumping ahead. Okay, see? so rate it, Jason. It's time to rate the game. All right. 
We spent a lot of time talking about it. We spent a lot of time with the game. It's a long review. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope we didn't ramble on too long. Well, uh, people who've watched us know to skip ahead if they didn't want to hear anymore. (laughs) My rating for this game, and might be a surprise actually because I'm going to be rating it lower than I would like. I've spent enough time with it. The game is a 7.5. And the reason why is the combat. Skirmishing is cool. We didn't really talk about the skirmishing element, which is just a quick way to do combat. It's cool, but gets kind of dull after a while. Don't get enough rewards, in my opinion, for how long it takes. And then just the overall combat on the map is a little dull. Neat way that you can move around the map and search as part of combat is great, but needs a little bit more flair. So 7.5 out of 10, solid game. Really, really good to give it a little bit better grade. If you saw a top 10 review, well, our top 10 games list, well, you know why this one now just didn't quite make the cut. Uh, so I, I'm going the other way. Um, I It would have been a 7 for me, but the fact that, you know, there's the the enjoyment factor of it and how long we, how much gameplay we got out of it how much fun we got out of it uh i again agree with you that it's a seven and a half it it could have gone the other way uh be, for the same reasons that you're saying mm-hmm. combat um you know some of the things we've talked about uh, about you know the, the the player experience but for me it's a solid seven and a half and it was a lot of fun yeah so with that being said what time is it now well it's time to like comment subscribe hit the bell to be notified when we have some new content for you also, down below in the video description, if you haven't seen pictures of this game, there's tons of them out there. Check out all of our social media feeds. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, we're on all of them. And then popping up in front of us will be links back to related content. So you'll see a link back to another campaign game. Not sure which one I'm going to put up there, but there'll be something. And a link to our latest review. So what time is it, Julie? Well, it's time to grab our drinks. Grab our best friend. We gotta keep playing games. We're gonna keep playing games. I'm glad to say that we're gonna keep playing folklore. We've got the box that you can't quite see up there. The new expansion coming. It'll just might be a little while. Oh, it's time for a change. Stay tuned for Gloomhaven. If we follow on the same speed, we'll give it to you in about 10 months. <laughs> I don't know. Gloomhaven might be even longer than that. <laughs> we'll probably take a break in between and maybe give you a partial review. Ah, uh, we. If we spend enough time with it, it can be a full review, even if it's not only halfway through. Okay.